Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Pubs video. Uh, behind me I have the flying horse, which piqued my curiosity being the only still existing pub on Oxford Street. That of course led to the question, well how many pubs were there in its heyday and what happened to them all? Thankfully we have a wonderful ordnance survey map from the 1890s, the middle of the 1890s, that marks all of the locations of the public houses that existed at that time with a PH. And we can cross-reference that with a later map between the 1940s and the 1960s to figure out the street numbering. The first pub on Oxford Street in the 1890s was number two, and it was the slightly enigmatically named A1. That would have stood just behind where I'm standing now, and there is sadly no remnant of it now. That entire block was demolished in 1900 for street widening, and indeed the writing was already on the cards as early as 1882. It is a very unusual name, the A1. I don't think I've ever encountered that, as certainly as a Victorian pub name before, and it's slightly reminiscent of those taxi firms that attempt to find a more favorable place in the phone book. At number six, Oxford Street in the 1890s, we have the Flying Horse, happily the one pub that still exists today. Cheers from the Flying Horse. The current building dates to 1892, and around that time it was renamed from the Flying Horse to the Tottenham. It just a few years ago reverted to its original name of the Flying Horse. The name Flying Horse is a heraldic device, but it seems like in this setting it probably has some reference to the era of the coaching inns, the building has been listed by Historic England. They refer to it as being in the Flemish Renaissance style. It was built by architects Savile and Martin. You can also see their work at the Punch Tavern on Fleet Street and the De Hems Bar, which is sort of on the edge of Chinatown, built in quite a similar style to this. It's also on camera's list of historic pub interiors. They give it a whopping three-star rating. It has wonderful carved mahogany all around the interior. And perhaps some of the most striking features are the series of sadly only three today paintings. These are the work of Felix de Young, a Belgian-born artist. At least one of those has his signature on it. There are originally four, each representing a different season of the year. You can see one for autumn, where the lady is holding grapes. There's one for summer, where the lady is holding a pheasant. There's one for spring, where the lady is holding flowers. The winter one is sadly now missing. There are also roundels in the ceiling, depicting classical scenes, also apparently the work of Felix de Young. There are a total of three back-painted mirrors in varying conditions, one larger one and two slightly more slender ones. I think the two slightly more slender ones obviously had a bit more wear and tear on them. There's also a mahogany surrounded fireplace at the back of the pub, although that is blocked up today. Camera notes that the bar back may be original, but probably has moved from its original location. The bar counter looks a bit more modern. It's a Nicholson's pub today. I'll show you the lineup. I had a half of Landlord. Next up at number 10, Oxford Street, was the Boar and Castle. Probably was a coaching inn. You can see on John Rock's 1764 map, a Blue Boar Yard or possibly Blue Boar Lane, which is likely referring to the same pub. It's now uh, half of a McDonald's. <laughs> the Boar and Castle was part of the site that eventually formed the Oxford Music Hall, which was demolished in, I think, 1926. On the site of what used to be the Oxford Music Hall today is now largely a Primark with a quite an impressive building. At number 53, on a site which is now occupied by a Wittard tea shop, was a pub that at the time of the 1890s map would have been known as the Primrose. Later, you can also see it on that 1940s to 1960s OS map, and at that time it was known as the Shamrock. Prior to that, it had been called, for most of its history, the Man Loaded with Mischief. And this pub was famous for having a sign that was attributed to Hogarth. And although the original was lost, there are later versions and later copies by other artists of that, which hopefully you can see one of those now. At number 61 on the corner with Soho Street, now occupied by a Zara, was the Old Queen's Head. This was owned by the Murs Brewery, that's M-E-U-X, and their headquarters, I believe, was just up the road at the other side of Tottenham Court Road, the Horseshoe Brewery, which you can see on the 1890s OS map very large site. The site here was sold off in the 1950s and there's fairly clear evidence that at that time it was redeveloped 
into commercial premises to, to become a shop. At number 89 here on the corner of Dean Street, now occupied by United Colours of Benetton, was the Black Horse. Now that had already disappeared by the time of that 1940s to 1960s OS map, so it seems not unlikely that it was destroyed by a bomb. There certainly was a heavy extent of bombing on Oxford Street in the Second World War. There's an interesting article I found from 1895 which kind of piqued my curiosity because it mentioned lager. It's really not something you associate with that late Victorian period. At 101, the corner of Great Chapel Street, there was the bird in hand can't really quite see what the current use of that site is. It's perhaps still under development. I found an interesting article about this pub where a man was fined three pounds for stealing three eggs. That's a pound an egg. At 118 was the American Stores, which was earlier known as the White Lion. Another amusing story about poultry related theft here from the newsbrave articles I could find. The site is now, I think it's part of this next store behind me, which interestingly was the former site of Bourne and Hollingsworth, which was one of the large department stores of Oxford Street back in the day. This was built in the 1920s in a sort of art deco style. That sculpture that you can see up on top is actually much more recent. It's from the 1990s, I believe, but is in a similar art deco style. At 127, the corner of Wardour Street and Oxford Street, now occupied by a Vodafone store behind me, was the Queen's Arms, which was also at one time known as the Canadian. There is a fun story here, yet more livestock related newspaper articles here about the landlord at the time having bought a prize cow at Smithfields and wanting to exhibit it in his bar and then it going on a bit of a rampage and smashing several plate glass doors. I don't know about you, but all this talk of old pubs is making me thirsty and perhaps it's time for an intermission. So I've just popped off Oxford Street onto the side street that is Berwick Street, heading down to Soho. And I have the Green Man pub behind me. It may be uh, a little bit underwhelming on the interior today, but it is actually a surprisingly historic pub. So I'm going to pop inside there and have a quick half. I think it's probably had a recent refurb, but it looks, uh, you know, like a typical, fairly bland, generic modern chain pub. Is it a Nicholson's pub? It is, however, surprisingly old. Some sources cite it as going back to the 1730s, and I was able to find records at the London Metropolitan Archive going back to 1755. The earliest newspaper mention I could find was from 1820. The building is listed by Historic England. They cite that the current building is early 19th century, and the frontage is likely Edwardian. Like I say, it looks like it's been through a recent refurb both internally and externally. There's certainly a new paint job on the frontage. They had Hogsback Tea, it's traditional English ale on tap, a little bit on the sour side, um, but um, yeah, in theory, quite a nice pint. At number 161 on the corner of Poland Street was the Wheat Chief, now a shop called Flannels. This is another pub that was destroyed in World War II, bombed in 1940, and there's a very clear gap in the map in that 1940s to 1960s OS map. At 183 was a pub called The Crown at the time of that 1890s map, and it shows as Brady's on that 1940s to 1960s OS map, now a Vision Express. Quite an ornate building, actually, and I think prior to being The Crown, it was a wine bar slash wine merchant owned by Poundsonby's. At 229, we have the Plume of Feathers. I think that's behind me there, roughly speaking, where that mango is today. There's an interesting newspaper article attached to that pub that attests to the decline in fortunes of public house owners in the period after that big boom in public house building in the late Victorian into early Edwardian period. And subsequently, the one-time owner of the Plume of Feathers filed for bankruptcy. There's also a much later newspaper record from 1965, by which time the pub had been de-licensed and was being sold on for redevelopment to become a shop. I know some of you will say in the comments that I should have stopped off at the Argyle Arms rather than the Green Man back there. And uh, I have covered this pub in a previous video when I was doing a sort of escape route from Christmas shopping. So I'll put a link up to that. Crossing over Oxford Circus now. Interesting to see in the 1890s map, it was known as Regent Circus. At number two, 
250 were the Scotch stores, slightly reminiscent of that pub in King's Cross today. The Scottish stores couldn't exactly pin down the location of that. There's been a lot of change in this singularly unattractive edifice behind me right now. It's possibly roughly on the site of where this H. Samuel is, or maybe the Twist Museum next door, whatever that is. Couldn't find a lot of newspaper records of its tenure as the Scotch stores. Most of them were just job adverts for staff for the pub. 269, can't quite figure out what it is today. It's possibly this empty shop unit that is an MBA store coming soon. <laughs> oh, what fun. There is a pub that also had many different geysers, had historically been known as the Dolphin. I think possibly its most interesting name was the Appenrut, which was a sort of German slash continental delicatessen and cafe and bar. Seems likely that a a uh, Germanic named restaurant slash bar slash cafe owner rather fell out of favour with the advent of World War One. Tellingly, the Paris branch of his chain of restaurants and cafes was vandalised on the eve of World War One. 313 was the Noah's Ark. Now the ground floor at least is occupied by a Swatch shop, the Swiss Watch shop. This is one of the most attractive buildings we're going to see today among these closed pubs. So this is a listed building. It was built in the 1870s probably. That pair of statues on the second floor in alcoves. Hard to see how they relate to the Noah's Ark. This was another pub owned by the Murr Brewery, the Murr's Brewery, M-E-U-X and was sold off at the same time as the old Queen's Head in 1959 for redevelopment into a commercial unit. At 349 was the Spread Eagle, formerly known as the White Horse. That site now occupied by a Vodafone store, completely redeveloped. Interestingly though, we do still have some vestige of the Spread Eagle remaining. The Spread Eagle moved a mere, what, two doors down to its new location, 8 Woodstock Street in 1955. Cheers from the Spread Eagle. So the pub was rebuilt here in 1955, but it had existed on Oxford Street all the way back to the 18th century. There are licensing records at the London Metropolitan Archive going back to 1759. And the earliest newspaper mention I could find was from 1819. Not really much to say about the exterior or the interior. I think the, uh, the Windsor lamps are a nice touch, but both on the outside and on the inside. I doubt very much that there's anything pre-1955. But it is nice that at least the name of one of these Oxford Street pubs has been preserved. It's a Green King pub today. I'm having some old speckled pen. At number 353 was, I believe, the horse and groom. Now this is an interesting case because it wasn't actually marked on that 1890s Ordnance Survey map. I only found about the existence of this because I was looking at a wonderful old photo looking down Oxford Street towards the old Marshall and Snellgrove department store and you could clearly see the name of a pub opposite that department store and, and that was a photo from the 1890s. Records on the Pubs History Now London Wiki site seem to suggest that it was trading during the mid 1890s so I'm not sure why that was omitted from the OS map. There is a date of 1905 on that building and I think it was redeveloped after it ceased to be a pub sadly there is no remnant of the horse and groom today. At number 364 was the Clarendon also at one time known as the Fox. I think that was probably demolished in the 1910s at some point the last newspaper mention I could find of it was from 1912 where the locals in the pub were contributing to a public appeal for the widows and orphans of the Titanic disaster. I think that site is now part of this super dry store. At 373 was the Hog in the Pound. That goes back to the 1750s and at one time was a stop for the Oxford Stagecoach. Now it's formed part of Bond Street Station. Interestingly though, just like the Spread Eagle back there, this pub actually moved to just a few meters away. The Hog in the Pound was rebuilt just behind me in 1962. And some of you may remember that because it was still in existence there until as recently as 2011 when it was demolished to make way for um, Deng, some kind of clothes shop today. There is a beautiful old photo I found on the Bygone Boozers site of the original location of the Hog in the Pound with two policemen standing outside. Not sure of the exact date on that, it looks either sort of late Victorian or early Edwardian. At 376 on the corner of James Street here behind me. Not quite sure what this is today, it looks like some sort of empty shop unit, another one 
in development was a more like a wine merchant possibly wine bar called Capon and Co. I did manage to find an advert for them that suggested you could have wines by the glass on the premises so I assume it functioned as a wine bar as well as a wine merchant. At 384 was the Victory also part of this same site that's currently being redeveloped. Just found one newspaper mention of that. 398 on the corner of Duke Street, the northwest corner, which is now part of Selfridges, was the King and Queen. That's one of three pubs that were all demolished. Eventually all the sites are no longer there because they now form part of Selfridges. At 418, also swallowed up as part of Selfridges now, were the Oxford Stores, at one time also known as the Princess Amelia, and at 442, also now swallowed up by Selfridges, was the Union. There's another film crew behind me, look there. <laughs> as I'm a film crew, it's just me. At 497, the east corner of Park Street behind me there, some sort of bizarre space age monstrosity now, was the Duke of Gloucester and that dated all the way back to the late 1700s at least. And just across the road from that, the east corner of Portman Street was the Delaware Arms. And finally, the 27th pub on Oxford Street in the 1890s, I believe, was the city of Quebec. Here on the corner of Old Quebec Street, a number 540. This Art Deco edifice here was built in, I believe, 1936, thereabouts, and it was the Mount Royal Hotel initially. You can see it quite clearly on that 1940s to 1960s map. At the time that was built, the city of Quebec pub was moved from the corner here to down the road on Old Quebec Street. It's a gay pub today, so I think I'll skip that one. I'll leave them to it, but uh, we'll go and find a final pub not too far off Oxford Street to wrap up the Carpenter's Arms. It is uh, it's a five minute walk or something from Marble Arch. It's not quite on Oxford Street, but it seemed like the best chance of a decent pubby pub in this neck of the woods. Woods, cheers from the Carpenter's Arms. First licensed in 1776, apparently, rebuilt in 1872. And it's another Murr Brewery pub, M-E-U-X, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. The earliest newspaper mention I could find was from 1805. It's a corner pub. Now seems to have two entrances, but I get the impression possibly the bit at the corner was formerly a third entrance. On the outside there's dado height panelling, it's lined with fluted pilasters, they're topped with corbels and they suggest that at some time there may have been a heavier, more involved bit of signage above now because today the sign is slightly recessed from the bit that they may have been holding up. The name of the pub is also carved into the stucco right at the top of the building. Inside it's not on camera's list of historic pub interiors or anything but they do give it a fairly generous write-up on whatpub.com. They note the tiling on the wall at one side, some mosaics on the floor. One side of the pub has a display of woodworking tools, which are of course very much in keeping with the name, the Carpenter's Arms, and this curved bar counter which has matchboard panelling. I wonder if that possibly retains some stubs of partitions that give clues to how the internal space may have been divided up if indeed there were originally three entrances and therefore likely three separate bar spaces inside. And there's some booth style seating over to one side of the pub and also some columns with composite capitals. So what have we learnt about the fate of Oxford Street's pubs? At one time I believe there were as many as 27, at least 27 I could clearly identify in the mid 1890s which probably represents the sort of peak of that late Victorian pub building boom. And by 2024, where are we now? There is just one. And in fact, I think that has been the case for a few decades now. I don't think there's any one reason that you can pin down as to why all of those pubs disappeared. There seem to be a number of factors over the ensuing sort of century and a bit. Oxford Street was originally a Roman road. It was always a major thoroughfare for getting in and out of London. And as such, 
in the golden age of coaching. It became an important coaching route and consequently established some coaching inns along its route. And I think that's perhaps one of the earliest clues as to how it started to go into decline with the advent of the railways. Those coaching inn type pubs were no longer necessary. Some of them were developed into other sites as we saw at the Oxford Music Hall, even though that still retained some vestige of the Boring Castle pub on the side. There's also some sense in some of the records in those pubs that the bust inevitably followed the boom of that late Victorian, early Edwardian pub building frenzy. Essentially, it seems that at least part of the problem was they just built too many pubs. The supply outstripped the demand. Some we saw were the victims of urban redevelopment, programs like street widening as we saw in the A1 public house right at the start. Several were demolished to build larger department stores as we saw three of them being wiped out with the construction of Selfridges. There may have been a small contribution from the decline of music halls and other related large-scale entertainment venues such as we saw with Oxford Music Hall. That was demolished in 1926. I assume the Boar and Castle quickly went into decline after that if it wasn't just demolished at the same time and other pubs in the surrounding area would probably have seen a drop in trade as a result. We saw several examples of pubs that were probably destroyed by bomb damage during World War II. There may have even been some that were damaged during World War I. It's easy to forget there were Zeppelin bombing raids way back in World War I and it seems to be the case that most of those sites were not considered valuable enough to rebuild as pubs. And then later on we saw clear evidence particularly in the 1950s and 1960s of commercial pressure to turn those units into shops. Finally, probably the last nail in the coffin were some developments around the Tube, the building of the Jubilee Line and Bond Street Station also put pay to a couple of pubs that may have been some of the last hangers on on Oxford Street. So there you have it, 27 pubs in the 1890s down to just a single pub in the 2020s. Some hope in the fact that at least one pub has hung on and Oxford Street is of course an extreme example. I think many of the pubs were just pushed into the side street into Soho, into Marleybone, into Mayfair and those areas are still thriving great areas for pubs. I hope that's been interesting, a bit of a different kind of video, a bit more of a focus on the pubs that don't exist anymore rather than the ones that do. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.